They came down from London to Brighton where she worked in a laundrette. She was always doing stuff, always cooking and baking, making pies and stews for people that couldn't afford much. If anyone wasn't very well, she'd go and collect their washing. It was all done in a, in a big silver bucket thing that she used to put on the stove and boil it all up. So it was all done like that. There was no washing machines and she had a mangle. And I used to love turning the mangle for all this washing to come out really flat. For, for Christmas and your birthday, it would always be from the tots. It would always be something second hand. But if you needed anything, she'd be the first one to put money in your hand. There were times when her own children needed new shoes. But if someone else this child also, she would buy them for that other child first before her own children, because that's how she was. I think in my nan's time, the women were women. They stayed at home, they looked after the children, they done the housework. That was it really, you didn't really go out and shout about in the streets like my granddad did. <laughs> she got a bit left behind and her story was never, never at the forefront. Here we are, cup of tea. Oh, When did you meet Harriet? Oh. I met her back in my tramway days. She used to work in the laundry. One of the best ironers they ever had, you know, she was. And I used to work in the laundry too, during the summer months. I used to wash silks and flannels. And I proposed to her in 1911 that her father objected. Why? Why, why, why did he object? Well, he didn't take a fancy to me, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, he put the bar up so we eloped. She was as important as my granddad because without my nan, I don't think my granddad would have been the person he was. But what lies behind the community worker, the public man of action? What happened at home during his long eventful life? And who was Harriet Cowley? The wives of working class heroes rarely receive the recognition they deserve. Their daughter, Ruby Cowley says- They always turn in and said, if it, hasn't, if it wasn't for your mother, I wouldn't be where I am today. And he always put it down to her that she was the one that, you know, kept him in his place. What was she like? She was very strict, very strict, very firm. Their love for each other was unconditional. You know, right down to when they were both ill and when my granddad actually died. She was never the same after he died. I'm Emily. I'm here at Studio 6, Harriet's Press. We offer a free wash and dry of a laundry load, a cup of tea, and we have creative activities on offer at the same time so people can do something creative while they wait for their laundry. I love being in the market. The kindness that is here, it's contagious. That was my nan's smelling salts, and they're still, still really strong. Anyone want to try? Buy me. It's really strong. It smells like weed, doesn't it? <laughs>